the GlideScope Video Laryngoscope, designed for first-pass success. A four-step technique to GlideScope Video Laryngoscopy combines direct vision of the patient with views on the GlideScope Video Monitor. Start by looking in the mouth to introduce the laryngoscope, at the screen to obtain the best glottic view, back in the mouth to introduce the endotracheal tube, and finally at the screen to intubate. Begin step one with direct vision, looking directly into the patient's mouth. With the patient appropriately positioned and with the GlideScope video laryngoscope in your left hand, introduce the GlideScope into the midline of the oral pharynx. Gently advance the GlideScope until the tip of the laryngoscope is past the posterior portion of the tongue. Unlike conventional laryngoscopy, the GlideScope video laryngoscope is introduced midline. No lateral displacement of the tongue is required. Step 2 is performed while viewing the video monitor the entire time. With the GlideScope inserted, look to the monitor to identify the epiglottis. Then manipulate the scope to obtain the best glottic view. The glottic view is optimized by a combination of advancing or withdrawing the laryngoscope slightly while increasing the tilt to seat the device in the vallecula or on the posterior surface of the epiglottis to obtain the best glottic view. When the GlideScope video laryngoscope is appropriately positioned, the glottic aperture is centered in the upper third of the video display. This optimal view in the display is achieved using minimal lift force, only two to three pounds. This provides a wider view and more working space for intubation, while the camera position further reduces the effect on the view from blood and secretions in the airway. The video image of the glottis when using the GlideScope video laryngoscope typically is a Cormac Lehane grade 1 or grade 2 view. The user may be tempted to immediately insert the endotracheal tube and try to navigate it through the glottic aperture while continuously looking at the video screen. However, in step 3 it is very important that you look directly at the patient's open mouth and not at the video monitor, watching the passage of the endotracheal tube to help avoid potential injury to the tonsils or soft palate. The endotracheal tube, which in this case is shaped by a glide right rigid stylet to complement the angle of the GlideScope video laryngoscope, is inserted under direct vision until the distal tip of the tube is very near the distal tip of the laryngoscope. This relationship is quickly and easily achieved, and only then should you return to looking at the video monitor. In step 4, focus on the video monitor as you advance the endotracheal tube. Returning your eyes to the video monitor gives you a view of the glottic aperture and near it, the tip of the endotracheal tube. Sometimes a slight withdrawal of the GlideScope is required to reduce the viewing angle and allow the glottis to drop. The tube is then advanced by gradually withdrawing the stylet 5 centimeters as the tube moves forward. Viewing the entire insertion step on the video monitor allows you to quickly and gently rotate or angle the tube using the right hand to redirect as needed. To review, the four steps to successful GlideScope video laryngoscopy are in the mouth to introduce the laryngoscope, at the screen to obtain the best glottic view, in the mouth to introduce the endotracheal tube, and at the screen to intubate. GlideScope video laryngoscopes designed for first-pass success.